to the Work Trends Podcast from Talent Culture. I'm your host, Megan Ambiro. Every week I interview interesting people who are reimagining work. And be sure to check out our Work Trends Twitter chat events calendar located at talentculture.com on the podcast page. Welcome, my friends, to the Talent Culture Work Trends Podcast. Today's episode is timely and critically important. My guest and I are going to be talking about workplace healthcare trends for 2021 and what employers need to know now more than ever. You know, at one time, benefits that addressed overall employee wellness were usually physical health benefits. But these are very different times that we're currently living in and well-being isn't just managing high blood pressure and your weight. Today, employee mental health is every bit as important and employers are placing greater emphasis on this. Thank heavens, we got a lot to cover today. So I wanna introduce you to my special guest so we can get this discussion going. But before I do, let me just tell you just a little bit about her. Richa Gupta has been in human resources for the last two decades. She joined her current employer, Cast Light Health, after serving as an acting chief people officer at Zooks, where she led acquisition into Amazon. Prior to that, she served as VP of Human Resources at PayPal and GE Digital. Her expertise and passions include leading organizational design, improving the employee experience, scaling and integrating teams, influencing across organizational boundaries, and inclusion practices to shape talent practices and business results, to name a few. Welcome, Richa. How are you? Great. I'm doing great, Megan. How are you doing? I'm doing all right over here. Excited to have you. Let's start with this question. How are the workforce trends evolving with the COVID-19 pandemic? And how has it shifted priorities for employers in 2021? Oh, absolutely. It's a brilliant question, Megan, and thanks for asking. And there's so much conversation about this topic. And today I would like to highlight three trends for you that I personally am closely watching and tracking. The first one being the ways of working and how the ways of working and getting things done is evolving across industries. So how we come together and work and produce results and create shareholder value. Uh, The second trend that I'm watching closely is how all aspects of leadership are evolving, how we lead our workforce and what COVID has put upon is challenging all of the leadership trends and the way we lead our teams. And the third one has been, uh, which of course, selfishly, I'm watching very closely being a part of Cast Light Health, is health and well-being strategy has become the workforce strategy, right? So how the employers are bringing the care for their employees at the core of their talent strategy. So those are the three vital trends that I'm personally tracking, Megan. Well, I know you're really busy, I bet you anything, you could have had nine more very easily on these trends. I agree with you on all of the trends you just mentioned. One of the things that strikes me is the priorities here right? There's so many things we can be doing. We have been put into a place of crisis. Now we're backing up and saying, oh, okay, what makes sense for our culture and our organization? Talk to us because I know you are in the trenches. That's what I love about you the most. I mean, what are the priorities that employers are now taking into account with respect to employee well-being strategies that they were not even previously considering before the pandemic? Megan, you and I both know nearly half of the Americans receive health insurance through their employers, meaning the employers can play a very vital role in employee health in 2021 and beyond. And we are watching through our uh, customer councils at Castlight that mid-size and large employers in particular can play a very critical leadership role in health advocacy, given their extensive reach into the workforce and their position as trusted resource for employees. A recent trust survey confirmed that majority of Americans trust their employers more than they trust government or media. And this This means employers can play a significant role in helping build trust within their respective organizations, help educate and inform employees with accurate science-based information on this pandemic, on vaccines, on support, and provide ongoing targeted personalized communication that is culturally appropriate for their organizations. But employers are at the core of making all of that happen. And the pandemic has also further complicated healthcare, right? Raising more questions and concerns than normal around navigating care options, insurance, out-of-pocket costs, testing, and now vaccines. 
So we have found that many of our employers we work with are taking advantage of using high-touch teams of clinical and benefits experts who we at Cathlite call care guides to help employees get personal attention, care, and guidance that they need. Love it. I mean, you're busy, huh? We are very busy. And thank God for who we are as a company. And, you know, at the core of our mission, Megan, our mission is enabling people lead happier, healthier, more productive lives through our very integrated platform that is personalized for people uh, to navigate to the best care for themselves and their families. So we definitely sit at the core of kind of enabling healthcare strategy to be a company's workforce strategy. What can you tell our audience about some of the biggest challenges facing employers as it relates to vaccine distribution, workplace policies? Like what's happening over on that front? That is, I mean, talk about a big topic. It is a very big topic and all can Consuming, and thank God for it. <laughs> um, and the majority of our employers that Castlight have spoken with feel that it is important to make the vaccine as easy for their employees to access as possible, right? And it should be the priority of, of our employers. And based on our customer survey, Castlight found several large employers have expressed a desire and a plan to offer COVID-19 vaccines to employees through either on-site or near-site health clinic or local health system, right, when appropriate for the phase of distribution, which is being laid out by our local and and federal government. So according to the CASLIGHT data, almost 20% of the flu vaccines are given in work site in normal years, right? So pre-COVID years. And now some stats for you and your listeners in regards to the vaccine itself, over half, which is about 52% of our customers will plan to offer on-site and near-site vaccine administration for their employees. 50% of the companies said that they will not mandate the vaccine, but will plan to make it easy to access as possible. And 60% said that after the majority of our workforce is vaccinated, they will not change any of their current COVID-19 safety protocols. So the masks, the uh, temperature checks, the symptom checks, the limitations on the number of workers in the office, et cetera, is going to continue. And many of our employers and customers are also planning to play a very active role in vaccine literacy and support to the to the employers. About 80% say that they're planning to distribute information about vaccines through their company and benefits newsletters. Many of our customers are utilizing CAST-like platform to provide a single centralized resource for COVID information. About 80% say that they're going to disseminate critical information through company-wide meetings and videos, emails. Executives are starting to play a very active role. So leadership by example, visible endorsement for COVID vaccine by the C-suite, etc. And tweaking policies like you touched on, right? So what should our PTO policy be to allow somebody to go take care of themselves, get the vaccine, and then deal with any of the side effects that they might have from vaccine, right? And how do we provide the helpful resources for COVID vaccine, et cetera? So there's a lot going on in the policy side. There's a lot going on in the communication, the executive support, and the role that the employers are are starting to play in this. I was just going to say, like, as we take a bird's eye view of this, when we look at employee benefit strategies and how they're changing in 2021, what is the relationship now between benefits consultants and, say, the C-suite? Like, that's a dynamic right there, right? Absolutely. And it is unfolding in front of our eyes in a very, very different way. And I think there are two dimensions to it. Um, So let's talk about the relationship and the kind of the business case for benefits consultants. Benefits consultants will still remain a very important intermediary, but their role has just gotten from being tactical consultants on benefits to really helping companies architect what the well-being strategies and the sustained employee well-being strategies need to look like. So their role has just been elevated, uplifted in a big way. Then let's talk about the role of CHROs and the entire HR function and how that's changing. Big time. That's what I was just going to ask you. Like, wow, if and we have a lot of CHROs in our audience. And if you're listening to Work Trends, let us know. How is it changing for you? Tell us, Risha, what's changing about both HR and then, you know, at the executive level? What is that looking like? Absolutely. And many of the companies I see is going through some kind of big change and big transformation, be it the growth and scale of the business, figuring out different strategies 
strategies on cash conservation so the transformations can still occur. Returning to growth is a mandate for a lot of companies. But how do you do this when your health care and the, the well-being of your of your workforce challenged in the way that we are seeing right now, right? So the first change in focus I've seen, as I touched on before, is how important it has become to consider healthcare strategy as your workforce strategy. And CHROs are in the in the middle of all of that. And benefits conversations historically have been just a priority for a benefits manager who emerges out of, you know, from, from the background during the benefits enrollment period, and then they recede into the background again. That is no longer the case, right? The med- benefits manager, the relationship of them with the C-suite and the CHRO have just become very, very critical. I mean, when was the last time that the board was asking for the workforce data around the high-risk population? How do we go serve them differently? How do we cater to the health care and well-being needs of, of our employee base? It is happening right now, you know, and CHROs in particular, Megan, need to more deeply understand their employee population. They're starting to and ask questions that we didn't do in the regular years, right? It is no longer just the case of providing the same equal benefits to all employees. We are seeing a shift happening amongst the employers where, you know, they're actively seeking, the CHROs and the HR leaders are actively seeking to address important issues like DNI and health equity. And given what a major part our social determinants of health play in the well-being of each of us, let's face it, healthcare has just become a new frontier for all things DNI. Right? So think about all of this, the need to understand our employee segments better, understand who we have, what kind of healthcare needs they have, how do we ensure a healthier, productive workforce starts with understanding who you have and then catering to the benefits in a, in a very personalized way. So that's the way in which I see the role of the CHROs and, and the benefits consultants changing. Well, and of course, you're using technology, I would imagine, on some of this. Now, I will say we need to keep HR human. That goes without saying. But there are technologies here, right, at our fingertips that can allow us to survey and employees, whether it's text messaging, mobile apps, you name it, right? I mean, how much of that is coming into play at the same time? Absolutely. And the way we communicate, Megan, has changed at scale you know, communicate on any topic, including including the benefits information. It goes back to my earlier point around the ways of working, right? And how, how the ways of working are evolving. We can no longer see people in person for the most part. So how do you keep the communication, the engagement, the productivity going? So technology really comes handy in that. And, and we at Castlight leverage a lot of it. Slack has, uh, you know, we have started to use that to the next level. Uh, the Zoom meetings, and we all know Zoom fatigue is real, but what else do you do, right? So that's our channel to make sure people stay connected and we all still see each other. Emails, um, virtual all hands, virtual meetings, all of that is very much in action. And really proud to report that, I mean, these complex times really bring up that creativity in us and we haven't skipped a beat on anything, right? A lot of employee resources, all virtual ways of virtually connecting each other, et cetera. So yes, you're right. The technology has definitely come to our rescue in these complex times. For sure. And you know what? We're going back to being human. That's okay. We have tools. We have technologies. It's not going to replace us caring about people and having that high touch. And again, personalization. This is a word I've been hearing literally every week now. And every single podcast, it seems like this word continues to come up. And there's a reason for it, right? We're putting the human back into HR by using some of these technologies. We're not replacing. And I think that's a really important important thing to get, right? Everybody's unique. And right now we're all going through something. There's not one person out there on the planet who's going, oh yeah, everything's just fine. I mean, that's not real. Now you're, you're right. And we realized it pre-COVID that everybody's special. Everybody brings a special superpower. Everybody has a different need in terms of how they see their own careers, futures, the way they work. But this time has really surfaced it all up. And I'll just take a different stance on it in terms of the inclusion, right? 
all of us have different needs, all of us work differently, but the way the managers have to now better understand the motivations of each of their individuals and team members and cater their, their feedback style, the management style, the way they connect with the employees, that all is definitely has surfaced up in a, in a good way. Well, finally, we've reached that point in our podcast. It is crystal ball time. What are your predictions for the future of work? So Megan, um, there, I have many predictions of future of work, but I'm going to highlight a few. Um, the first one is around hybrid workforce and how we better manage and leverage our hybrid workforce models is here to stay. So that's the first one. The second one that I want to highlight is um, a shift in the role of HR. And I'm a huge fan of HR as a product concept. And that starts with HR first understanding who we are serving, who we are building our talent products and solutions for, and doing it in a very data-centric way. So this pandemic has enforced the need for HR to have a product mindset with solutions anchored into data about our workforce. That trend is here to stay, COVID or no COVID. The last one that I want to um, highlight is my belief that, uh, you know, HR is a profession for deeply compassionate, courageous, kind-hearted, collaborative, and analytical humans. And it's a special place for special people, Megan. And uh, we are the front lines of leading the employees, the boards, the C-suite, the frontline managers through this time. And it takes a lot of courage, kindness, and horizontal leadership across the board. So those qualities in the best HR professionals, that's the trend that is here to stay. And I also want to say my hats off to my fellow CHROs and the HR professionals. Just know that nobody has the playbook for this, for this time that we are leading through, but we are building one together, right? So keep sharing, be kind to yourselves and keep learning. Richard Gupta, I want to thank you for being an HR rock star. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you, Megan. It has been fun. If you enjoy listening to this Work Trends podcast, do me a favor, share it with your friends, your colleagues, your family members, so they can stay current on what's happening in the world of work. Be sure to listen to our next podcast when I'm going to be speaking with another very interesting Work Trends guest. Catch up with you next time. Thanks for listening to Work Trends from Talent Culture. Join us every Wednesday at 1.30 p.m. Eastern for a live Twitter chat with our podcast guest. To learn more about guests featured on today's show, visit the show notes for this episode at talentculture.com and help us spread the word. Subscribe to Work Trends wherever you listen to podcasts. Leave us a rating, review, and iTunes. Share Work Trends with your coworkers, your friends. Look forward to it. See you next time. <laughs>